Now you got a machine that won't stop. It'll right. continue to output. You know, like it's not a situation where, okay, you don't feel like creating today. No, it keeps going. <laughs> so, wow. you know, so it's it's gonna be different for the music industry. It's gonna be different for everything. So what's and... going what's gonna make what's gonna make what's gonna make or what's gonna make an artist or a producer even stand out? Like it's, you, you're gonna have to do something that's essentially never been done before. Something that's off the grid. Yeah, and I think what happens here is that we we have spent the last ten years uh, sharing sounds, sharing packs, sharing MIDI files, sharing instrumentals, sharing samples, and and this is what kind of created this ecosystem of everything sounding the same. Right. It's because now everybody is sharing the sounds. They're sharing the styles. So we've all been able to reverse engineer each other. Whereas before, you, you couldn't do what Timberland did. So everything right everything right now is like a pre-cooked meal. Right. Pretty much. And that's going to be, that's what's going to cause the demise of the music industry to AI. It's because of that. Because we've now conditioned everybody to that if it doesn't sound or feel like this, that, and the third, we don't want to hear it. So now we've put people into the perpetual loop of wanting it to sound that way. If it don't have this sound, it's not hot. Mm -hmm. They're not open to new shit. So they're not open to it. So now it's a perfect for AI. Oh, you like cookie cutter? Okay, we can program that. Just can feed it to you. So, but what it can also do, you know, this could be a real opportunity for real, the real creativity uh, to really shine, you know. You got to get on the other side. And the other side is basically you got to get on the other side of the engineering. Mm -hmm. Right? That's really the thing right now. It's the prompt engineering. It's engineering the prompts that create the outputs. Yeah. Like, you got to get on that side. So the same way that you and I would program a beat, Mm -hmm. We have to get on the side of programming an AI that outputs the beat, right? And out outputs it in a in a certain way or, or a certain style, almost like to your own signature. Yeah, like that the other AIs don't necessarily do. And then on top of that, you have to be very good at reinventing yourself. Exactly, because once that becomes a thing, and and that gets thrown into the the, the ecosystem. You got it now. Okay, I got to do something else now. Quick. That, that's a th bro, but that's what I've been talking about, man. Like, I think, I don't think people really understand or really want to pay attention to like, oh, you, you have to be able to bring your own, you know, bring your own flavor to what's going on right now. Right. You know, you, if, if you're not, if you're not doing it, how do you stand out? It's crowded. This music business situation is crowded, and it's it's so crowded that you know we we see what's going on like in real time. Like I see what's going on. I see people who are buying music, buying beats. Ah, you bought the beat now. What? Yeah. Do you know what to do? How do you get yourself to stand out from everybody else? How do you get people to even want to listen to what you have to offer? You know, and then if it sounds like everybody else's, yeah, it might help to you know to get that initial listen. But it might stand it, it might not stand out enough to make a difference. Not in the like, long why time. should we include? Why should we include this? We got ten records that sound just like this. You know, mm -hmm. we're good on this. You know, I always use the outcast scenario as a, as a, as my um my point. You know. The way those guys were reinventing themselves for the for the first three albums, you know, when they made one type of album and then the next album told he was just totally different. Like what the this is dope, but it's not like at all. It's like a different and then to do it again and it suddenly switch up. And I think that is a very good example to use when it comes to just reinventing yourself over and over, time and time again. You can't do the same thing. There's going to be a point where you have to really be creative. I think in the outcast case, 
these guys just knew what good music sounded like. Yeah. Like, good music overall. And I think in some cases, like, you got good music that's regional and you got good music overall. Like, you know, you might, you know, and, and you can't really reinvent your stuff if you're not into music. Like, you can't. Yeah. Like, if you're not into it, you can't reinvent. Because a lot of times people would ask us, like, how are you able to make those pivot? And it's because we're able to make that pivot just because you're, you got to get yourself deep into the music. Like, if you're not into the music that you're, you're listening to, you, you can't pivot. You got yeah, you, you got you got other shit. You got to listen yeah. to other music. You're gonna be stuck. Like yeah. you, you know, what I'm saying you, you're not gonna you're not gonna understand the progressions of other styles of music. You're not gonna understand it. You're not gonna be able to reverse engineer it. All you're gonna right. hear is boom back, boom back, and you're not gonna hear it any other kind of way. Right. You yeah. know. So so it's it's important. Like so so they were basically giving us the education on how to continue relevancy and how to make music timeless. Right. Right. Because once the, once that sound went out, does your music fade? Mm. That's that's the situation. So like, if you go back to the, if you go back to some of these albums, you know, from Tribe or you know, if you're talking about uh, Outkast or forth and so on, like, mm. yeah, you can continue to play those because those things continue to encompass the stuff that made music great in time. Right. So so in order to stand out in the AI world. You're gonna to have to be real good at what you do, because, you know, from what I'm seeing, they're saying basically it, it can pass the bar exam at a ninety percentile. <laughs> okay, this is this is not this is serious. You know, this is serious. But again, when we're dealing with an AI, this particularly for Chat GPT four, it's a language model. So anything that has to do with that type of language, like you know, reading comprehension, summary, actionable stuff like that, it's gonna win. Because they can do it faster than you can do it. 